Akasha. You're right. Akasha, camping canoe dog. Wilderness outdoorsy dog. Safari dog. You good girl. Welcome to my wild camp.
think nature's coming back to life. What can you sniff, Gosh? What is it? As soon as she got out of the sleeping bag, she was in the sleeping bag with me. As soon as um, she got out, it was all sniffing around. It was like, obviously, she can smell a few different romas, but you can actually tell the difference when I was paddling here. Okay, I came down the right side of this island and I've actually, uh, as you can see, moored up and um, uh, wrecky on this little island. Here's the Thames now the other side, over this side here. I'll just follow the dog, she knows where to go, considering we've never been on here before. So here's the other side of the Thames. Okay, this is Whitchurch Bridge. And, uh, oh, there she is. Hello. <laughs> and we just moored up over here. Got a muck exploring about. This is a place that I moored up on a couple of weeks ago in Pangborn Kosh. Here she comes. All excited, having a sniff about. So it's um, Sunday the 2nd of August 2009 and it's about half past five and um, we'll, uh, I think, if there's not too many dogs around, he's actually more up on the other side. I'm finished with a little shot of the dog, he's going to pick up sticks and... <laughs> Right, well, we're now in the uh, canoe, aren't we, Cars? Yeah. So we're just going to leave this little island and uh, just paddle off round there. What do you see, Cars? What is it? Hey? So what we'll do is we'll go back over that way. Where's the stick? Got the stick. Got the stick. Bring it to me then. Gosh, bring the stick. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with it now? Go back to the seat. Should we go now? Should we 
go in a canoe. Here we go, come here. Okay, we've just kind of paddled down about, I don't know, about half a mile, two thirds of a mile, and just pulled in here. And we've got a welcoming party of llamas. All coming over, Kash, to have a look at the mutt. They're all inquisitive. <laughs> Kash, sit. They all just look frozen in time. She's having a sniff about. They're more interested in her than what she is then. But we came from right the way up there, down. As I just pulled in here, and uh, once Karsh has relaxed a little bit, give her a drink and then uh, make something to eat. Karsh is chilling after all the excitement, and I'm now ready to heat up. I've got one lot in there, all natural, needs no fridge, um, Cumbrian lamb hot pot, which is really nice. So, one's not really enough, and I want a big meal. so. Just got to heat it up on there and um, stuff my face. The time now is uh, coming up to 10 to 7, so we must be here for about 45 minutes to an hour, have something to eat, have a chill. While well, the warmth of the sun actually is quite high, I think it will stay up there all the time that I'm here anyway. And if the cloud doesn't get any thicker, then it will remain nice and warm. Yeah, another bit of filming of cooking food whilst out canoeing. <laughs> Cumbrian hot pot bubbling away. Just let that simmer down a little bit. Put the tea on in a moment. And Karsh is having a chill. And the llamas have somewhat calmed down now. Eating some grass. Just loitering about when we do make a move or Karsh gets up they sort of like raise their heads and gawk over so but she's um, quite relaxed now it's like being on a safari for her there's the dog and she's been a really good canoe dog today okay there's the llamas that's where we were Oh, she's already on waiting. Sit back. And um, we're going to make our way home now. Make our way back to Maple Durham. It's just gone 8 o'clock, so we've got about half hour of reasonable light, and that's all it's going to take to get back at a nice, slow, nice, steady paddle. So that's near the end of the day, and it's been really nice uh, on the Thames again. Paddling from Maple Durham to Pangbourne, and then we're about halfway back to finish off in my Hello Karsh. We're gonna go in the car now, yeah? We're gonna go in the car now, yeah? You've been a good girl, been a good canoe dog. Right. Gotta wheel the trolley. And then put the rucksack on. Carl just wants to get in the car and we've ended up back down at Maple Durham Lock yet again and um, we're going to walk down that way to go in the car. Hello, dog. Am I your bibby? I'm her bibby. <laughs> yeah, you're saying hello, YouTube. You're saying hello, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying hello. Okay, sit down. Sit down. Kiss your paw. Give me your paw. Thank you. There's a good girl. Okay, wait to YouTube. <laughs> okay, fun and frolics. You gotta have it. 
Um, okay, the philosophies behind, or the philosophy behind, um, uh, can you stop that heckling please? <laughs> the philosophy behind BB bags, Gore-Tex BB bags, they're initially made for the military. Hi guys and gals, it's Pete, Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors. And I'm sitting here in the middle of the Thames, which was at 12.30 at night, but because the clocks have gone forward, it's now 1.30 in the morning. And uh, I'm on my way to one of the islands, one of the first ones I went to in this area. And the sky is absolutely clear. Not a cloud in the sky at all. So I'm going to get a paddle on, I've got about another mile or so to go. Oh, she's ventured off for some fresh air. Okay, it's coming to about 2.30 in the afternoon. LNT, leave no trace, that's where the fire pit was. Right, so we're off, upstream, <laughs> a bit of resistance into the breeze. And um, as always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate your interest in this two nighter on the riverbank of the island, the midnight paddle to get here. So, be out there, be safe. Was it? Was it? You heard them, did you? I think there's some other people on the other side of the island. Before I finally pack up and go, um, I thought I'd have some all-in dog wrestling. Right, better get on and pack up. We're all packed up. Dog's ready to go, aren't you, Kosh? Are you ready now? Yeah? And uh, I'm going to see if I can do my famous one-handed paddle. A couple about four o'clock in the morning, I thought, hmm, I need the sleeping bag. So I put the sleeping bag on, three-season sleeping bag. Then I thought, what else can I have to keep me warm? And lo and behold, hello, Kosh. <laughs> Didn't have a hot water bottle, so I used the dog. Or should I say, maybe the dog used me for a bit of warmth and comfort. Didn't you? Yeah, I think you did. The car was very disciplined. I mean, at home I don't allow her to come in the kitchen unless, you know, I say so. So, you know, the hygiene and what have you. Well, she's not infested with anything, of course, but, uh, you know, she knows her place and, you know, I try to keep her well trained, especially when you're sort of outdoors. If you can train them well at home and domestically, then when they are outdoors and they get used to it, um, you know, they function the same way. But, I mean, you can see she's sort of chilling because she heard the word, because she heard the word she, you know, he's pricked up again. She knows all these different words, but you can see she's well chilled. And, um, you know, there's still toast on the floor as I call it, T-R-E-A-T, -E which she doesn't react to. But I'm now actually going to sort of have a bite. She's sort of looking, but... 
but I'm not looking at her now. But when I say this word, treat, treat. Ah, come over here. <laughs> okay, sit down, sit down, wait, wait, stay there. Right, wait, no, wait, sit. What do I want? What do I want? Good girl. And what do I want, the other paw? Okay, there you are. Butter toast for bushcraft and canoe dog. She's even wagging her tail, look. Oh, I'm loving this. But I wouldn't give her any brunch, any of the uh, food out of the mist tin because it's got onion in it and onions are toxic to dogs, so. <laughs> yeah, there's some more over here if you want some more treat. Yeah? I'm gonna give her the rest of that. Right, okay, let's have a bit of um, entertainment. Kosh, bring me the stick. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Good girl, give it to me. No, don't drop it. Give it to me, give it to me. Up here, give it to me, give it to me. Up here, give it to me. Give me the stick, give me the stick. Good girl, okay, ready? Firstly, I would not advocate throwing sticks. I know I'm gonna throw this one, but I'm gonna spin it just at a short distance. And I know it will land before Karsh can get there. But a lot of people, I've seen them throwing sticks like that. And what happens, they spin they dig in the ground and maybe stick up, and by the time the dog runs, the dog can get impaled on it. Whee, jumping up. Trick's already started. Okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, ready? Okay, sit down. Good girl, ready? What'd you say? Speak to me. What? What'd you say? What'd you say? Speak to me. <coughs> That's it, ready? Good girl, bring it in. Good girl. Oh, that's the cabaret over with, and I'm going to get out on the waters in a moment. As you can see, I eventually got in the old, uh, my old faithful sleeping system, my softy trousers and jacket, and then uh, unzipping the length of the two-season Tropical Army sleeping bag, but just leaving the end zipped up. If you've not seen it before, especially if you're new to the channel, um, I haven't specced it for a while, but I just like that to be a hood over the boots and it can actually open either side as you can see. Plus as well, it enables Safari Dog to be comfy underneath. You are right, Kosh? There you are, let her go back. She can relax. So it's easy for her to get in and out as well. Plus as well, if I need to get up for any reason quickly, um, all I've got to do is just open it. And place it back so all good stuff the different types of food that i have when i'm out and then sort of share those ideas with you anyway i'm going to strike camp now as i say so um are you waiting dog are you waiting kosh are you waiting to go yeah right i'm going to strike down rucksack's packed away yeah i know you're saying i want to go back to my normal bed now thanks very much i don't mind this safari stuff but uh, i do like my cozy Dutch design dog bed, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're a good girl. tray here so if it did swamp with any water you know you've got a good hello dog you've got to jump over the top you're gonna to come inside come on in come on in three not used to being indoors are you this is like being indoors <laughs> all right doggy. 
You're right, dog. Yeah, you okay? <laughs> yeah, have a little strip. Oh, hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I see. You're gonna cut right on me, mate. And it was, I bet she was sport for comfort. Yeah, because you was inside, weren't you? So that was even more comfortable and more conducive for you, feeling nice and warm, because obviously we're inside a tent. And there's Karsha, <laughs> sniffing any remnants, just making some scones just now. Good. Was that good? Okay, sit down. Sit down then. Sit. Give me your hour because you know I was going to say paw. Give us your paw then. Give me your paw. And the other one. And the other one. Okay, so this is what I've pitched before. Not much green foliage or shrubbery around to uh, sort of screen, screen me off. But uh, from looking at the fallen trees um, and any dead wood, not much has changed since the last time I was here. So I'm gonna double check, give anything upstanding a good push, anything that's within falling range trajectory to me. Um, but I think I'm gonna be all right here. So it's now coming up to nearly 5.30 so I've got about an hour of decent light so I'm going to set up shelter and um, catch up with you guys in a little while. You alright my friendly? Give us your paw, give us your paw. Come on, sit down and give us your paw. Sit down then. Sit down. Give me your paw. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're a good girl. Yeah, so, um, yeah, my little safari camping canoe dog. I thought I was uh, going to lose her at the beginning of this year, uh, in January. Not long into the new year. Um, so I laid her down in her bed, and as I say, her tail was sort of wagging, but uh, her eyes literally were going from side to side and the top of her eyebrows were sort of flickering about, like this, and I thought, 
that's it. And so, um, I explained the circumstances to the vet on the phone and um, they asked me a few things to do. So I wrapped her up, put her in the car. By that time she she wasn't as bad, her eyelids were still sort of flicking her eyes, her eyebrows were still and her eyes weren't going backwards and forwards or side to side as, as quickly. But it seemed whatever the condition was was starting to calm down, but she couldn't walk. So I put her in the back of the car and say so we sort of consoling her and that. Anyway, we got to the vets. And by the time we got to the vets, she could walk on her two front legs just about. Um, but her back legs kept sort of collapsing and the vet wanted to test and just see what the condition was by seeing what her abilities were. <laughs> so anyway, one thing led to another. The best thing to do is um, give her a steroid injection and also a particular medication and also another injection which allowed the blood flow because apparently the condition she had from the symptoms that she was displaying uh, was similar to an aneurysm. And it would seem, on the surface of it, a condition uh, is when there's pressure on the brain, which then switches off one of the nerves at the back of the at the back of the brain, which controls the optic nerve, and also the spinal column, which means that information of you know thinking, processing, then the action wasn't happening. So of course she wants to walk, and her legs are collapsing. And, uh, the following day, I then went to my local vets. And there was medication which was like uh, anticoagulant that, lets, that, that thins the blood flow to allow the blood flow to stimulate the central nervous system which then carries the oxygen which then makes obviously the central nervous system work. Um, they weren't sure whether it could have been a stroke um, or you know whether it's a tumour or a mixture of things. And how she started to respond to the medication gave indications it was just this temporary paralysis. Um, and to keep an eye on her you know, for a couple of days and then if it if um, she was progressing to get better. Anyway, she was waddling around, but her character never left her. Her temperament, her character, that sort of whizzy little, oh, there's something there, right, chase after it, even though she was having to drag her legs about. So I didn't want to keep her from being outside. Um, so after about four days, we went for the first walk outside near a park and a woodland just around the corner from me. Ah, doggy. Ah, doggy, come on in, sit on my lap. Come on in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the long and the short of it is, is um, sort of nearly two months later, she's, you can see she's not... <laughs> yeah, you should have left my rum alone in my hip flask, which I took one swig of last night, that's all. Stay off the alcohol, dog. <laughs> You're a good girl. Yeah, you sit on me. You're just getting excited, do not you? Hey, licky, licky. So the long and the short of it is, is that she's got no permanent damage as such. But she's not too bad now. I'd say she's about 95% recovered. I mean, she's got the physical ability. I mean, she's she's going to be 15 the latter part of this year. So, you know, she's doing well. She's never had any never had any health problems. She's had a couple of injuries, but she's been a, a real healthy lump of energy and um, continues to be so. But what I didn't want, what I really didn't want, was if I was to have lost her under those sort of conditions. I'd rather a bit like myself, you know, <laughs> when it's my final days, I'd rather be somewhere like this or <laughs> trekking over some mountain somewhere in the most inclement weather and maybe end my days that way than just something really boring and in four walls. And that's what I didn't really want for her, you know. Um, so not that I'm thinking that she's on borrowed time, far from it. I'm just uh, blessed that she's still around and she got over it and she's one of those 60 to 70 percent. Aren't you a dog, huh? silly old dog? You silly doggy. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but I'm getting excited. <laughs> um, you know, she's one of those 60 to 70 percent that's uh, that's come through it. So I'm blessed with that and appreciative that. Um, I'd be, so we're coming out today, appreciating that you know she can be with me. But coming out yesterday rather than being out today. The reason why after about three, four days of her being confined, being indoors, was to take her outdoors just a little bit, not force her to do anything, but to take her outdoors and get her into the environment that, that she's used to and that, she, that stimulates her. And albeit she was a bit restricted within that environment because of her abilities, um, that in itself you know, creates a well-being process when you put somebody or an animal or anything into an environment which gives them a sense of well-being and a sense of natural, uh, natural ability and who they or what they actually are. Uh, it creates a healing process and I'm quite sure that contributed to it as well, so as I say I'm blessed and really thankful. Yeah, silly dog. She's still mad, I don't know where she gets it from.
girl. Off you get. Good girl. There. Well, one of the good indications, just to sort of finally on a bit of briefing on the health of camping canoe dog, um, was when I knew that she was definitely on the mend about oh, maybe just nearly two weeks ago. She disappeared into the laurel bushes, which is one of the areas where we go for a walk local to me. And uh, she's always sniffing out scents of different animals and what have you, her tail's wagging. And, and uh, so I had a rummage in, in the laurel bushes and then she came out with this ball because it's near to a park area where people take their dogs and throw balls and the balls get lost. Anyway, she found this ball, came running out, dropped it in front of my feet, legged it off as if to say, right, kick it then. And I thought, yeah. She's back to being a Kasha. Back to being a Kasha, ain't you, doggy? Yeah. And the thing is, you know, when you have pets, of course they become part of your life, you know. But especially when you got, I wouldn't call Kash, a Kasha a working dog, but you know, she's she's been a tracker with me, she's tracked. You know, she's tracked and picked up scents for me when we've done different things. She's been an uh, early warning system for me to know who's about, what's about, even before I've been able to sort of assess anything. So of course, when they become part of your life, especially outdoors, especially outdoors, um, you know, they become more part of, of everything you do. So yes, yeah, so that was quite a big issue for me really, but there you go, that's life. Good girl. Yeah. <laughs> you good girl. Yeah. Ooh, Daisy. What? What is it? What is it? What is it? Glad to be in the canoe. Out on the water. Camping safari canoe dog. You speaking to me? What are you saying? What are you saying? What? Yeah, I know, it's good, isn't it? It's like, oh, it's a long time since we've done this. Then in the box. Got a carrot for Kash. Hey, Kash, you want a carrot? Yeah, a little treat. That'll keep you happy for a while. <laughs> or I could have some kit on the dog if I get one of those um, webbing type dog coats where I can fix things to it and then maybe <laughs> fit it on dog and you'd be carrying some of my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, stretch your legs a little bit, yeah? Oh, different things to smell around here. Взрыв, голод, эпидемия, снежный буран, вселенский потоп. Питер Майнд знает, что ничем хорошим эта жизнь не закончится. Брутален и трезв. Может спать на камне и, не дрогнув, застрелить и съесть белку. Но свои 16-летние дворняжки Карши, слепой и глухой, собираются сшить на швейной машинке спальный мешок из фланели. Когда мы с ней вдвоем будем спать на земле, она будет использовать меня как грелку. Скорее, чем я ее. Хотя будет притворяться, что помогает мне. Да, милая? Каждый Новый год приносит разочарование. В мире относительно тихо. Ржавеют топоры и киснет молоко длительного хранения. Лиза Герсин и Борис Халфин, телекомпания НТВ, Великобритания.
So I'm just going to relax and savour this soup and then uh, in a little while knock up my main course. But meanwhile, are you on the men's safari dog? Yeah, you are right, Kash? You are right. Yeah, you can't have none of this soup. You had a bit of sweet corn mixed with that dog food that comes in a little tray. It was like um, a pate. I think poultry and veg and then just put sweet corn with it and she's eaten half of that so but yeah she's getting on the mend at the moment aren't you dog you had life-saving surgery a couple of weeks ago didn't you safari dogs having a chill as well just relaxing as it's the first time we've had a chance to come out since actually the last time I came here to do um, sort of cooking a lunch on the solstice Sunday which is the 21st of June this year and since then we haven't been able to go out because a week after the solstice um, she had a real health problem where she had to have emergency surgery but she's a tough old boot a bit like her old man <laughs> will never give in my maxim is Never give up unless you're dead. <laughs> Hello, dog. Okay, it's getting on for about 10 o'clock. So I might make a cup of tea, a brew, uh, in a little while, and some biscuits, and... Um, then settle for the night, but it's just such a nice calm. I'm sort of a bit, not tired, knackered, but um, yeah, I'm sort of just sort of chilled. And it just feels too nice to um, go to sleep right now, even if I could sleep. Just want to savour the outdoors and just the atmosphere and just this lovely little secluded spot, albeit I'm surrounded by stinging nettles <laughs> as my protective fortress barrier. Um, but I'll... Uh, I'll catch up with you once I've had a bit of a kip and uh, make some breakfast in the morning. Good morning, it's about nine o'clock. So now of course, ready to start the day. It's a bit breezy. Uh, it's quite nice actually, it's fresh. Then uh, it's gonna be quite a nice, mild outdoorsy day. Safari dog slept on her folded up fleece blanket with the uh, sleeping bag draped over her, but you can see she's actually crept in <laughs> to be underneath with me, haven't you, dog? <laughs> yeah. And I just slept in the clothes that I was wearing last night well, before I settled, and then just opened up the uh, two-season sleeping bag and just draped it over the two of us. And that was really comfortable for the night to sleep in. Coming out for a nice secluded riverbank overnighter and for little safari dog to do a little bit of rehab and getting her back into the outdoors and just having a really nice, just over 24 hours out in the canoe and a bit of wild camping. Give it a chew, go on. Taste it, don't swallow it whole, that's better. 
Why is it dogs chew things that have got no flavour to them, and yet things that are really flavoursome and really yummy, try and swallow it in one whole snatch? Oh well, that's little animal creatures for you. Yes it is, don't say no. <laughs> okay, I struck down the basher, the canoe's packed up loaded up with plenty of space for me to sit and cast between my legs. We don't paddle in tandem, but we sit in tandem. <laughs> so she's ready now to go. Got a lot of sun, nice bit of rehab. Come on, guys. Safari dog, camping canoe dog, yeah. Hello, hello. Are you my friend? Yeah. Oh, you saying hello? Akasha, Akasha, camping canoe dog, safari dog, yeah. You alright? Give us your paw then. Give us your paw. Give me your paw. Yeah. Any other one? Give us your paw. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You've been a good girl with your other three doggy friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're a goodie. Are you a goodie? Yeah. Hello. Hello. You're a good girl. You right, dog? You having a sniff about? Sniffing round our manor. She could go around this place blindfolded. What are you sniffing, doggy? You define all the odds. We don't want to force it, do we? 
but while you've got a little bit of life like you like this, can't put it out. You've got, still got a spring in your step. My God, what is going on with this dog? A blinking miracle dog. Should we go into a little woody part? Where you go on your little safari scouts? Discovered what you've been smelling over the years, really, haven't we? Month jacks. Little pygmy deers. That's where they come. And you always used to sniff them late at night, see where they were going, where they were. Didn't you, hey? You're good girl. Don't want to force it, just nice and steady. Careful. That's it, careful. Oh, you sniff, hey? Don't want to overdo it, Kosh. Come on then, shall we go back now? Come on then. Yeah. Thinking Spartan dog, I don't know. Come on then. Nice and gently. Nice and gently.
Thank you.